So you already know about flat or planar geometry, or Euclidean geometry, and spherical geometry. So it turns out there's this third alternative, hyperbolic geometry. But in order to understand what this is, we need to have a bit more of an accurate um, or precise description of what the other two are. And mathematicians like to have things very precisely defined. So the way that mathematicians have come to define flat geometry is through, the con through understanding the concept of parallel lines. Now, we all instinctively understand what parallel lines are that we have two lines that are parallel, they stay the same distance apart forever and ever. And that's you know, instinctively what we all know easily as parallel lines. But mathematicians like to have very, very well-defined definitions. So here's how a mathematician defines a parallel line. And this becomes the way we can understand all different geometries. So a mathematician says, I have a straight line and I have a point outside the line. And we're going to ask the question, how many lines are there that I can draw through that point that never meet the original line? And you all know the answer to this? What, what is the answer? One. Very good. And that's basically, Euclid was the person who first um, defined this concept, and he that is a formal definition of a parallel line. And in a very great way, this definition defines what, hap what a flat space is. If it is the case that there's always one line that goes through a point and never meets this line, if that's always the case, then that is actually what a flat piece of, that is what a flat space is. But you might be sitting there thinking, well, what other options are there? But we all do know about another option because we're all familiar with the surface of the earth. We're all familiar with the surface of the earth. The surf, think of the surface of a beach ball. Don't think about what happens inside a beach ball, just the skin of a beach ball. So we can ask the same question again. We take the surface of a sphere and we say, how, what, let us do the same exercise. We draw a line on our sphere, we have a point outside the line, and we say, how many line, straight lines can I draw through the point that never meets the original line? We're asking exactly the same question. Okay, so now we're asked to, do, now we have a, a, a bigger conundrum. We have to ask, well, what does it mean to talk about a straight line on a curved surface? And mathematicians struggled with that question for a very long time. And they came to the answer that basically, on the surface of a sphere, the straight lines are basically the biggest circles you can draw, like the equator and the lines of longitude, what we call a great circle. That is a straight line in curved space. And the generalized mathematical concept of this is what's called a geodesic. So I've given you a big hint. And now I'll ask you the question. How many straight lines are there that I can draw on the surface of my sphere that go through this point that never meet our original straight line? Two. Yeah. Two. Sorry? Two. Two. Uh, that's not quite the answer. Well, I was guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Think about what you know about the surface of the Earth. Think about the way the equator and the lines of longitude behave. There would only be one, I think. Infinite. That goes through the point. The, the, the question is, how many lines, if we think about this line here being, this, this is, I think this is the surface of the Earth. This is the equator. And remember what I told you, that all lines on the surface of a sphere must be the biggest possible circles like the equator. So think about what you know about the, a globe of the Earth. Oh, and so they can't intersect. Yeah. So they, they, they would have, yeah. We're, we're trying to fathom what is the number of lines like this that 
would never intersect with this one. None. None. Yes. Yes, zero is the answer. Because you think about the equator and the lines of longitude. They all cross one another. So on the surface of a sphere, there is no such thing as a straight line that doesn't um, intersect with any other straight line. So it, on basically, on the surface of a sphere, yeah. all straight lines intersect. So on the surface of the Earth, at the equator, all the lines of longitude are parallel, but yet they come together at the north and south poles. So even though they, they start off being um, parallel here, they all intersect at the pole. So we have a situation here where we've got a question and we've got two answers to it. We've got one and zero. And if there are two answers to a question, to a mathematician, that's suspicious. It suggests there might be more than two answers. And it turns out that there is indeed a third answer. And if zero and one are the first two options, there's another, there's another number that sort of naturally suggests itself to mathematicians. Does anyone want to guess what that number might be? Infinite, yes, that's exactly right. Zero, one, and infinity. Absence, presence, and multitude. And it turns out that there is indeed a space, there is indeed a geometry, where there is an infinite number of parallel lines. So here we have a situation where there is a straight line, there is a point outside the line, and I can draw an infinite number of lines that go through this point and never meet the original line. And it's called, this space is called hyperbolic space. And the word hyperbolic was chosen because there is, as it were, an excess of parallel lines. Now, every single one of you, I'm sure, is sitting here looking at this diagram and saying that I'm cheating <laughs> because the lines are curved. And you're, having, you're struggling to understand this. And that's good because you're having the experience that mathematicians had. Mathematicians couldn't understand this situation. They were driven mad by it. In the early 19th century, there are amazing quotes from mathematicians basically saying, give up this because it will literally drive you mad. The greatest mathematical minds of Western culture couldn't understand that diagram either. But they could prove that it existed. And it wasn't until um, the invention of the hyperbolic crochet that mathematicians really had a way to make sense of this diagram. The reason that that looks curved is because I'm projecting this geometry onto a flat surface. So it's distorting the proportions. It's just as if when I project um, a map of the world onto a flat surface, like a Mercator projection, the map that we're all familiar with, it distorts the distances. And so too, we can't make a, a, a picture of this on a flat plane without distorting. That's why those lines look curved. But if, you, if you're still struggling with this, don't worry, because mathematicians didn't have a way to model this until 1997, when a, a woman named Dr. Dana Tamina, who, who is also a mathematician, but who had grown up in Latvia doing handicrafts, and she came along and said, you know what, guys, I can make a physical model of this. I can do it with knitting or crochet. And the first one that she did was with knitting, but she quickly realized crochet was a better medium. So here, stitched on a crochet model is proof that Euclid's parallel postulate is wrong, the most famous proposition in mathematics. And I can prove to you that these lines are straight, even though they look curved there. But I can prove to you that they are straight on the surface because I can fold <coughs> along each of these lines. So within the context of the surface, they are straight lines. And this is the first time when Dana developed these models that mathematicians had a way to actually hold hyperbolic shapes in their hands and to play with it. And you can stitch all kinds of mathematical theorems on these surfaces, and they, they are now used by mathematics departments um, in places like Cornell, where Dana teaches, to introduce the students to non-Euclidean geometry.